Mr. and Miss America, all the ships at sea. This is Ed Sheen for Colony Confidential. What's up, everybody? It's Joey Sauce, the boss, Colony Confidential. We're here today with some of our favorite people. We have Lorne Sederoff returning from Search Kings, and we have James Rocker from Nerds That Care. We are going to be talking about artificial intelligence, how it specifically relates to home services and pest control and all the other rabbit holes we can go down. So Lon and James, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Joe. Good to see you guys again. Hi, Ed. Nice to see you guys. And, Same and here. Thank you, guys. I appreciate having this discussion today. Really excited to be here. Due to my IT ignorance, I had to go out to James's office. I don't know if they told you. Oh, yeah, because it's one thing. You have this. Is it up in the right-hand corner? Press that button. Oh, Jesus I told him I'm coming out. <laughs> and Matt and Dan were very gracious and very helpful. So hats off to them before we start. But I'm mentioning because I know about this sort of, I know, I heard about it. But there's all that personal stuff that I used a lot, but that was a long time ago before anything like that came out. But they were really good to me. It felt good when I was leaving. I don't know what they did, but the thing is working. I know how to use it. I'm good now. So, hey, I love hearing that. And nothing artificial about those guys when you're coming to a T person face to face. Nothing beats that. But we'll certainly talk about how artificial intelligence can streamline many things. Of course, efficiency for sure. Great hearing that, Ed. And then thanks for coming out to our office. Yeah. So, for the first time, I think in any of our lifetimes, we've, Lauren, we've spoken about disruption a lot. And normally you see disruption in a certain sector or very specific like Uber to, to taxis and things of that nature. But artificial intelligence, and correct me if I'm wrong, again, me and Ed are the most ignorant in when it comes to technology. This is probably the first disruption that is global, if you will. It's going to disrupt every sector, right? Yeah, as I see it, certainly this is the biggest disruption for sure since the internet, if not earlier. And when you listen to guys like Bill Gates talking about this as the biggest disruption in his lifetime, we we should be ready and we should be just devouring whatever information we can to figure out where's the advantage here. Because from what I'm seeing is you're either going to use it or close your eyes and someone else is going to use it and have a more, have a superior product to you. So you got to play by the rules. It's like sometimes our customers, they say, oh, I, I hate using Google. I don't want them to have my information or I don't want to have to play by their terms. Someone else is finding a hundred new customers that month because they are playing by the rules, whether they like it or not. So AI is here. And as we see it, we needed to move quick in order to be ahead of this massive change to all industries, really. So since artificial intelligence, I hate to say since it started, because it's been around, but since this rapid pace has begun, what, how often is it changed, James, in, in the IT sector, James is a company, Nerds That Care is a managed service provider. They do all of our IT. And again, Search Kings Whoa. is, okay. relax. Ed's correcting me on who's who, like, I don't know. Lawn from Surge Kings is, is, is more towards the marketing. You've heard us speak with Lawn before when Google Guarantee was a big thing and whatnot. But as far as cutting edge, like James, how rapid is it changing? And Lawn, after James, same question. How rapid is it changing in your area? Yeah, it's changing very quickly. I think some of the easiest things to understand are some of these chat bots, for example. We're in the support business getting a live person on the phone as companies grow is sometimes difficult and maybe not the most efficient manner to support your customers, especially when they're looking for a very simple answer. So nowadays you can go on to many websites have this already. A lot of customer service engines are built into this where you're asking a question. You think you're chatting with a live person, but in fact, it's really an artificial intelligence bot. But I think the biggest craze right now and we'll get into a bunch of different uh, solutions today, but ChatGPT is certainly taking the world by storm. And if you don't know what ChatGPT is right now, it's this AI engine where you literally could ask it any question and not just any question. P my industry is asking it for code, right? For programming language code. How do you write a script to automate 
whatever it is, a task that you used to do manually. And it spits it out in four seconds. We're not talking like this is like an hour and I got to wait. This is instant. So the instant gratification that you're getting from how to become more efficient in any kind of way, especially around automation, is built into this amazing engine that's out there right now and freely available, of course, for you, for anybody to use called ChatGPT. So one second, Lauren, do you know what ChatGPT is? That's where I can't do something and it says you press a button for help and you ask a question and then they tell you. Nope. Okay. Yeah, sometimes that's fine. No, that's good. Sometimes it's okay to say you're not like, you don't just have to pretend. I don't know. There you go. It's fine. <laughs> so. Okay. So the first thing for ChatGPT is it has access to all the information on the internet, but it's not a reference library the way you might think Google is, right? When you ask Google a question about how to fix a washing machine, it's going to reference websites, videos on YouTube, etc. What ChatGPT does is create unique content for you. And AI does this across platforms based on your search query or what you need. So if you explain to AI what you're looking for, it can create custom content. So you have a problem with your customer communication. You want to put out an email to all your customers. Typically, you would write that email, show it to someone, maybe use an ad extension or a, an app extension to try to customize it. With ChatGPT, you could explain your goal. We're Colony Pest Management. We're in Brooklyn. Our customer base is typically between this age and this age. The message we're trying to give out is ABC, Make it sound professional, but casual, okay? All of those. And now it produces that email for you. And then you simply have to say, make it shorter. And they'll take the, all the messaging from before, and now they'll make it shorter. Throw in a joke about mice in New York City into the email to keep the conversation casual. Now it does that make it a more formal email. So it's ghost writing for you in the, and the only limitation is your ability to prompt it with exactly what you want. We're also using it on the operations side. Anything that you're doing that is operational, you can start to teach AI what you do and what you need, and it can start to produce those spreadsheets for you, the code for the spreadsheet, you name it, you have to learn how to ask it for what you need. That's the learning. Because if you just say, write me an email to tell my customers that we're closed on the holidays, it's going to give you a pretty standard email. But throw in a joke about Memorial Day or acknowledge their summer, the temperature or whatever, it's going to produce a higher quality of email. So it's incredibly disruptive. We are using ChatGPT for performance improvement plans. We're taking the team member's behavioral assessment and adding that in writing. We're having these issues. We want to make them better using XYZ criteria. And here's their behavioral assessment to base it off of. And like you said, James, it spit it out in five seconds. Yeah. And then we just went through it and tweaked it. I use it all the time. I, I'll type an email to a customer, to an employee, to the whole group here of employees, and I'll just type it into ChatGPT and I'll say, rewrite this email for me. And sometimes I got to dumb it down a little bit because sometimes it makes me sound too smart, but and then not my writing style, which is okay, right? Because you want to, sometimes you just miss some of those things and those some important items that you want to include. And it really spits out a really nice professional version of yourself. It just sounds great. And you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to write, but I couldn't get there on my own. And, and instead of taking 10 minutes to write a simple email, now you have, now you have your time back. So it's an amazing tool. Yeah, and back to Lauren's point about the detail, in that email or in anything, you could probably say, um, gear it towards an eighth grade reading level or something of that nature. And then it will dumb it down, if you will, from a yep. higher level. It's insane. An example of that, Joe, is you would feed it two or three of your previous emails that you've put out so that the machine learns your style. 
and then say, write me another email, but these are the topics, but keep my style the same. That's yeah. how kid, that's how kids are getting busted in school because they're not including the, hey, these are my previous capabilities. Now write me right. another one. It's like all of a sudden they're writing like a, an esteemed author. Yeah, it's incredible. Even if you wanted to write a book, right? Every everyone there's a lot of people out there that do want to be an aspiring author, right? Or want to have always dreamed about writing a book. I actually have that dream. Now I could use this tool to develop a ton of content that will take me weeks and months to probably come up with. And I have it in one day if I want it to be. Obviously, there's probably some legality conversations around some of that, but do your research accordingly. But here we go. Yeah. Let me give you one more. You see what's happening in Hollywood right now. You have the actors and the writers combining their efforts on strike because what's basically happening is you can provide AI with all of, fill in the actor's name, Jim Carrey, okay, all of his previous work and say, produce for me a new movie that is about these seven things, the apocalypse coming, whatever, boyfriend, girlfriend, this, that, the typical, and AI can produce a movie that Jim Carrey didn't spend one minute on that the audience will think Jim Carrey is starring in and Jim Carrey doesn't make a cent. So the actors and writers are in a mode here where they need to protect their previous work in order for AI not to produce replication ultimately without anyone making any money besides the person who prompted machine learning to do it. So essentially, the attorneys are going to make out the most from artificial intelligence. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Sounds familiar. So just real quick question, going back to the chatbots that was mentioned. Lauren, we spoke about this in the past, how Google wanted live people answering the phones. That was probably like a year or so ago when we spoke. Is artificial intelligence going to be able to scam Google on that? This is hypothetical because we haven't seen a virtual assistant, I guess we would call it, that replicates human voice inside. We don't have any customers right now yet that are answering the phone with someone that you would think is a real person that is indeed an AI. Once that happens, we'll have intel into does Google's AI pick up on it and deem it to be not a real person. Ultimately, my guess here, Google wins. Who has more resources than Google, right? So yeah. in marketing right now, in lead generation, Google evaluates quality of answering of calls, just to give us all context here. They evaluate your speed to answer and then the results of the call, right? Because they have access to that. We don't know yet, but if a virtual bot wants to enter that space of handling leads coming in, there's something to talk about there, but we'll, we would be watching it very closely on an account level to see how does Google respond to that with their ranking. Okay. So James, you have a ton of different clients in the service field, like pest control, plumbing, HVAC, everything like that. What are you seeing the biggest changes that AI is having on services? Yeah, yeah, I think it's just the machine learning itself. As you start feeding and start giving it more content, it's going to be able to produce better results for business owners to make better decisions for their customers, for their clientele. One of the industries, maybe a little bit closely, I can relate to is the food industry. Imagine an event where you're planning tons of food for, say, thousands of guests, right? As you start to learn how much food you need, how many drinks you need to serve, there's so much less waste that's going to be, that's going to happen from all the learning that's going on with some of these tools. I think in your industry, Joe, as it relates to some of the work that you guys are doing, I think that the amount of solutions that you deliver, whether it's the traps, whether it's the poison, whether it's how you're laying out what needs to be done from a pest control side of things, less waste for you, less, less turnover of product or 
people are going to be something that you're going to be able to really predict a lot better than potentially ever before with all this information that's coming. So I think it's really the wealth of information that's gathered and the future prediction of the resources that you need, that the resources that business owners need produces less waste. That obviously affects your bottom line. You can make better business decisions that way with a lot of these tools that are coming. A little bit in our industry now, we're looking to switch some of our tools to having our customer service platform integrated with ChatGPT and other AI aspects to provide a better experience to our customers. And now our team, for example, has to write less content. It's canned, it's there, it's given to them. We can not expect so much what the customer is gonna say, but we almost can predict what's going to happen and what some of the outcomes are for what we're doing. So I think it's, it's unpredictable right now a little bit, but I think ultimately it's going to cause much more efficiency for those types of businesses, even like scheduling, right? You have a plumber that needs to go from Riverhead on Long Island to Manhattan. Maybe he has five stops around the island. What's the most efficient way for me to get there? We could all look at a map, right? But that takes time. Now the AI software can just spit out the best route for you to go here first, actually, because the traffic is going to be worse this way. There's so many ways that you can look at it, but I think ultimately we're talking about efficiency, savings, and more profit for businesses. Yeah. So going back to what you're talking about in the pest control industry. So leading up to this for the past, I want to say 15 years, there's been technology that you basically go and it's all electronic. It started as ERM, electronic rotor monitoring. Now they have stuff that takes pictures of fly machines. You could set it to every 30 seconds. And when you get it, or when a mouse or a rat or an insect goes into a trap through heat signatures and touch points, it can tell you obviously by size, if it's a rat, mouse, or some type of insect. And then you would dispatch your team accordingly. But the biggest piece for us, aside from cost, was analyzing the data, right? Like you got, so you have a thousand customers and you have all of this data coming in and you have a human trying to analyze it. One, what was the process going to be to analyze it? What were you going to do after you analyzed it? Now I imagine we can use the AI and just say, here's what I want to, speaking back to what Lauren said, here's exactly what I want to do with this data for customer a, or even take it a step further, if you're on the platinum plan, this is how we analyze platinum data, and this is how you dispatch technicians to the platinum customer, and then so on and so forth down the road. So that's probably, aside from getting rid of humans, that's probably the most exciting piece of artificial intelligence for me. Is to right. When I say getting rid of humans, I'm joking, but we all know the hardest part of running a small business is dealing with the team and the human aspect of it. You make a great point about the data. So if you have a lot of customers in a concentrated area and you're reporting that there's a lot of pest activity there, marketing to those neighborhoods, right? Marketing to that geographic location is something that you wouldn't know about. Again, it would be very difficult for a human to analyze that as quickly as, of course, AI could. And now you have an entire new marketing feed here or tons of sales opportunities, I should say in those geographic locations that maybe you weren't aware of previously. Yeah, it's a great point. It's all about analyzing the data quickly and efficiently to deliver the best customer experience for what you do. Yeah, so you said a great word, marketing. That was a layup for Lauren. Because Lauren, you guys are doing some fun stuff with marketing and AI, right? Yeah, so first of all, just going back to your point about how to utilize it with labor, like the key to AI is you can keep teaching it so it can continue to learn what you need as opposed to think about buying a software out of the box where you utilize its capabilities, you get trained up on it, and then you essentially are limited by its capabilities, right? You can only use it to a certain extent. With AI, you can keep teaching it what you want based on how you're using it already. So you can continue to utilize it and grow with it. An example is what we're doing is essentially, we have called about 5,000 accounts that we manage, okay? These are lead generation accounts. 
a customer may have an account, they're trying to generate rodent leads on Long Island. Okay. And so in the past, we basically are recording those calls. Okay. And then we're spot checking, listening to some, getting an idea of, of when capacity is an issue, getting an idea when price points too high, you're losing over price, you're losing over availability. You're, and those are insights that are anecdotal. That costs a lot of time and effort to figure out what's happening inside each home service business to figure out, should we spend $100 a lead, right? We, you being the business owner, should you spend $100 a lead if you can only close a third of them? Now we're talking about $300 acquisition costs, right? And all of this was very anecdotal based on listening to the calls coming in and seeing how much money you're spending. What we've built is essentially an ability to score calls based on revenue opportunity of the call and also provide insights into where is the lost acquisition coming from. So is it capacity? Is it price? Is it lack of ability to schedule? Listen to calls and you realize that the person answering the phone is just a glorified answer taker. They're not actually confirming, yep, we're going to come out in the next 24 hours and we'll call you on the way. And so the tool that we've built, basically think of it like an x-ray machine into all calls coming into the business that you want to analyze. They could be your calls from different paid marketing sources or a mailer or a billboard on the side of the highway or whatever. All of a sudden, now those calls are being scored for revenue opportunity based on customer intent, okay? Not necessarily based on how well you answer it, just score them based on revenue opportunity. So we know, listen, Google guarantee is making you, you're getting 80% of your calls are great from that source. We just analyzed your Yelp and your Angie's along the way, and we're at 50, 60%, move your money around. We actually were looking at some accounts where Google guarantee quality was lower than Google pay-per-click. And that allowed us to start moving the money in the right direction for profitability. Then the training of the office staff comes from the summaries that we're producing of caller was calling because they're seeing mice. Office staff explained that there was no time to come out today and that if they were interested, they should call back tomorrow. So then you can look at that and see, okay, now that's a training opportunity for us. So you can integrate this into your performance plans, right? Because you know who answered the phone and you know what their response was. And at a click, you can listen to the call to confirm, yep, AI was scoring this one accurately. So all we need to do is basically say, okay, Joe, let's put, let's identify four of your sources, okay? This association, this network, this sponsorship deal, wherever you're investing, okay? All we're going to do is layer on a call tracking number to start. That's on your end. So you tell us where you want the calls to land. We're going to tell you what number to show. That's the mechanics. By doing that, we guarantee that source is accurate and that the leads came in through that source. Then analyzing the lead quality and the revenue opportunities from that source is all the AI work and the tech that we built. So I called someplace and they have this system. They know a lot about me before we even start to talk. They, they, they know, know my, again, my dear economic status. What, that's what I'm getting. I don't know if I'm right or not. But. That would depend on who you're calling and through a portal. This is net new You've never heard of them. And they saw you speak at an event, Joe. And, you know, you were at a golf tournament where you had, where you set up a promo and a sponsor to hole. And on the sign of the hole, you had your phone number and your brand. You know nothing about this person, but now they run a small property management company. And you put a promo on there because of the golf tournament, reach out and we'll do first month free or whatever. Throw the phone number up. Now we can figure out exactly how many quality calls came from that plan, right? That attempt. Not so much that you're going to know the economic situation or the demographics of that person calling. We, not, we don't have no way of capturing that. A lot of privacy issues with that. That information is more about your search history, Ed. 
that's how they're starting to know more about you is based on your search history and following you. But net new, it's more of how did they get to you to start? That's what we're after. And what's the revenue opportunity of the call? So Lauren, thank you. I forgot that you speak at Sheen. So it's <laughs> funny, James, part of how we started working together is they told me, don't worry, we'll translate. Because my biggest thing with having an IT company is them explaining something to me and me being like, yeah, I don't get it with an engineer. And so Matt and James often say, don't worry, we'll translate you to the nerds and then we'll translate nerd to you. So I got to do that with Ed all the time because I was just about to explain to him that it's completely different. What Lauren is doing is helping you. Same thing as what James said about efficiency and saving money. Now they're tracking phone calls. It's helping Lauren because his team physically doesn't have to do it. You got it? I, I Listen, I there'll did, be a test tomorrow. I did the same. <laughs> we advertised. We asked them, where'd you get the, where'd you? Right. And then you was like, wait a minute, this one is not that good. We got to do more in this one because we got to expand the ad because we're really getting a lot of calls from this one. So it narrows the field. The way you do it now is a lot quicker. I'm sure if we speak to Lauren in, in three weeks, it'll be even more developed and digging down. And this is available now, Lauren? Yeah, this we're doing now for a few hundred accounts. Think of the customization here where you have performance plans, right? And you want to tie in so we can create custom prompts to identify some things that you're looking for in your calls and score accordingly, okay? That's just customization. For most of our clients, it's show me which revenue stream or which advertising stream is most profitable so we know where to put it because we got a fixed, call it a fixed 20 grand a month for marketing, right? So if we can show you, go move 15 of it to this direction and spread the other five out, it's huge value. I got a question for you. We have a lot of clients that have, they, they'll activate a new phone number, right? For whatever their marketing plan is, different channels, like you were saying, you know, like how many phone numbers is too many phone numbers? And can you limit it for a client that, you know, that has 10, I don't know, 1-800 numbers or, or their area code or what have you? Is there a way to limit some of that and, and channel that in knowing where those sources come from? Yeah, I think there's an element here where you're where there's overkill. The first thing I would say is local numbers you need. I don't want to see a 1-800 number. Customers are thinking corporate, right? Some big company that's going to either outsource it or charge me travel time and all that stuff. So local. And then it's a little bit about thinking about what do you actually care about? What are you trying to measure with all these numbers? Like for some clients, it might just be termites versus wildlife as an example. And that's enough. Or it's by county. We want to see if, if Suffolk County is more profitable. So we're going to do county level. We can do as many as make sense, but we always push back on what are we trying to actually learn here so that we can measure and say at the end of six weeks, okay, this is where the money is. This is where the money's flowing in from for sure. Like in plumbing, for example, drains, anytime you're digging, it's more profitable than anything you're just doing essentially above the ground. So it would make sense to see how profitable your drain campaign is. That makes sense. Do you really need it a hundred different phone numbers? Probably not. Cool. Thank you. You could probably recycle some too, right? Obviously not your Google number or not your very specific number, but you could have an event number, right? Like golf outing, we'll keep this number up until the next golf outing and then just change the name from Emerald to Manhattan, to whatever. So there's got to be a way to rinse and repeat some of the phone numbers to, yeah. to not have too many. And they're not expensive. Phone numbers are quite inexpensive, but you just want to make sure that they're not these spammy phone numbers that have been resold over and over again. Yeah. In any industry, not just service or home services, have you been seeing AI plugins to CRMs? Or a plug-in, I don't know the right word, plug-ins or... A yeah, so yeah. the way to think of it, from my point of view, is it's basically like a concierge. Coming up next time on Colony Confidential. Okay, that's the concept that AI is evolving into. If you teach your AI bot what your business flow is, what you want your customer experience to be, how you want things routed, booked, invoices... And you start investing in teaching the plugin 
AI bot. It can be taught to automate your processes and it can be taught to spit out to you what you're looking for.